Hi guys, this is Sebastian again from codingthesmartway.com and this is the third part of our Angular material um, series. So in the first part you have learned how to install and embed the Angular material library in your Angular 4 application, uh, how to set up a project and how to use uh, basic form elements like buttons, input elements and so on. And uh, then in the second part, we have been focusing on um, uh, dialogues, uh, tooltips and snack bars. So pop-ups basically, and how you can embed and use those elements in your application. And now in this third part, we will be focusing on another important area of that library and that are navigation elements. There are three main navigation elements in the Angular material library that are menus, site, nav elements and toolbars and in this tutorial now we will explore how to use those three elements in your application step by step so stay tuned okay for this tutorial i'll assume that you already have a basic angular 4 project initiated and the angular material library installed if you would like to uh, get through the steps to install angular material in your angular for project, please um, please take a look at the first part of the series where I explain every step in detail. Uh, for now, you can see here I have already prepared uh, a new project. Um, the development server is already running here in the terminal, and uh, the project is uh, a base um, Angular 4 project with the Angular Material Library installed, so everything is set up so that we can directly dive into uh, navigation elements and the first navigation element um, which we will be using here in our application will be the menu element. So for the demonstration of the usage of the menu element, Let's first create a new component in our application. So I'm switching over here to um, the, the terminal and I'm using the Angular command line interface to add a new component here to the project by saying ng g for generate component um, and then the name of that component should be menu demo. Okay. Uh, here you can see um, a new folder is created here within my um, app folder. It's called menu demo and uh, you can see it here. Four new files in total have been added and uh, the app.module.ts as you can see it here has also been updated. The menu demo component um, has been imported here and has been added to the declarations array uh, so that menu demo component will be usable within our application. Okay, so the first step here in app.module.ts is to import um, some more modules um, and the elements of the Angular uh, material library are organized in modules so we need to import those modules first. And uh, what I need here is first the MD menu module, of course, because I'd like to use the menu um, components in my application. Then I need to add MD button module as well, because we will also be using um, material design buttons. Um, I also need uh, the MD icon module. Um, and finally, I need the MD card module here. And all those modules are imported from the at Angular slash material library, of course. And then we need to um, add those modules to the imports array here of the ng module decorator as well so that everything is available here in our application. So we need to add MD menu module, MD button module, MD icon module, and MD card module as well. Okay. 
Okay, now let's switch over to the template of menu demo component. And the template is available in file menu demo.component.html. So I'll remove the code which is uh, already inside of that file. <clears throat> okay, and then start implementing our uh, user interface, which should demonstrate the usage of the MD menu component. First, I'll start with an MD card element just for layout um, reasons. So we will be using an MD card here. Um, okay, inside of the MD card element, I'm including an MD dash card title to assign a title here to the card and I'll um, I'm, I'll be using the text Angular Material Menu Demo. So let's close that element here. So next we will use on the element MD <coughs> card content. Okay, and within the MD-card-content element, uh, first, I'll include a button so the user then can click on that button and by clicking on the button, the menu is triggered. So the menu is popping up and uh, to achieve that behavior, let's start with a button element here. Um, let's use a button in material design by assigning the directive md-raised-button. Assign a color here. We will be using the primary color from our uh, material theme and then I'll bind the property MD menu trigger for to the string menu. <clears throat> this is the identifier of the menu which should be triggered by clicking on that button. We will be defining that menu next. But first let's close this tag here. Um, let's include a description for the button. It's open menu, menu like so. Okay, and let's close that element. Okay, so next uh, we need to include the implementation of the menu, and we do that by using the md menu element and then create a local template variable here called menu. So the name of this uh, a variable should um, correspond to the string which has been assigned to MD menu trigger for. And we need to assign here the string MD menu so that we are uh, storing a reference to the menu uh, in, um, in the template variable. Okay. So let's close this element first. So within MD menu, we uh, would like to include uh, menu items, of course, or three menu items. And each menu item is implemented by using a button element so that the user can click on that button. And we are assigning the directive md-menu-item here to the button element, like so. And within that button, we are including an icon because I'd like to display an icon for each of the menu elements. Um, and to include the icon, I'm using the md-icon uh, element here. So this should get the set settings icon. Um, okay. And then of course we need a text. We are embedding that text um, of the menu item in a span element. So it's settings here, okay, like so. And now I'm copy this button um, source code here and insert it um, a second time and um, a third time. Okay, and for the second menu item, we are choosing uh, the icon, let's say, voicemail. And the description here should be check uh, voicemail. And for the third item, 
I'm choosing uh, the icon notifications off. Okay. And uh, the text displayed here is disable alerts. Okay, like so. So now the output, which is generated by the template of menu demo component, uh, should be included in the output we see in the browser. And to achieve that behavior, we need to include uh, that component in our output of our main components template. And that is located here in app.component.html. As you can see here, that is a default <coughs> source code, which is available here for that um, template. And then we can first of all remove all that content here and then um, i'm starting out with div element again um, and within the div element i'd like to display um, the output of um, my menu demo component and that is achieved by including the app dash menu demo um, element here and why is it called app dot uh, app dash menu demo the reason is because if you take a look at menu demo.component.ts you can see here um, the uh, selector property is set to the string app dash menu demo and that is a string um, which contains the name of the element which is used to then include the components output in uh, another component template like we uh, did it here Okay, so our uh, development server for the Angular application is still running, as you can see here in the terminal. Now we can check um, in the browser uh, that the output corresponds with um, what we want to achieve. Now you can see here it's displaying our MD card element, and within that MD card element we have the headline here, um, so the title and the button open menu and now i can click on the open menu button here and the menu is popping up and you can see i have three elements here in uh, this menu and i can uh, select uh, for example settings here and uh, that is the way the md menu element is working so what's also possible with uh, with menus here is uh, that we can implement so-called nested menus so this simply means that an md um, menu item element opens up another sub menu and to implement a nested menu in our sample application we just need to add the md menu trigger for um, attribute once again in one of our um, md menu items and to define a second menu which is then the nested menu which opens up so let's do it um, opening up menu demo.component.html once again here and for the first settings um, menu item i'm now adding um, the uh, md menu trigger for and i'm binding it to a string which is called uh, sub menu in that case and then uh, i'm defining another um, md menu element here so md dash menu and i'm assigning now the template variable called sub menu of course and i'm again assigning the string md menu here so within that second menu now let's define again three uh, menu item elements so a button with uh, the directive md dash menu dash item assigned let's call it general close that button here then copy that button element and pass it in a second and a third time just changing the text no, it should be display and maybe profile. Okay, so let's check it in the browser again. Um, I'm opening up my menu. The first menu is displayed. Um, now you have the error here, and you can see it's opening up now 
uh, the submenu here uh, with my three items as defined. So next, uh, let's take a look at uh, the second element, and that's uh, the site nav element. Uh, site nav is part of the uh, Angular Material Library as well, and makes it possible to display a panel uh, next or maybe beside uh, some form of primary content. And to demonstrate the usage of site nav, let's first create another a new component in our application, again by using the Angular command line interface. So here in my terminal, in my project directory, I'm again saying ng g component, and the new component should be called site nav demo. Okay, hit return, and uh, you can see here it's again generating a new subfolder here, site nav demo with uh, four new files in side and app.module.ts has been um, updated again. The component is already included here and added to the declarations array. So everything is set up so that we can um, make use of site nav demo component to demonstrate the usage of site nav next. So to make use of the site nav element, I first need to import one more um, module here and the module we do need is md side nav module and don't forget to add that new model module here to the imports array as well okay so everything is set up so now we can switch to the template of side nav demo component um, remove the content here and start over again Okay, so let's start with an md-card element again here in that file. Um, let's assign a class as well, uh, which is called demo-panel. We will be implementing the corresponding CSS code later on. And uh, within that md-card element, let's um, make use of an md-card title here. And now the title should be Angular Material Site Nav Demo. Just demo. Okay. So the next element we do need here is MD uh, dash card dash content, of course. So within the content, we start um, using the MD sidebar, uh, site nav um, container element first. So it's uh, MD dash site nav dash container, and I'll be assigning a class here as well, which is called uh, example container. So Let's close that container element first. Within that container, now let's define the site nav element itself, which is done by using md site nav. Uh, let's assign a template variable here, so site nav. And I'll be using a class again. Uh, this time, this class is called example site nav okay so uh, within the md dash site nav element uh, let's include uh, just um, text information so site nav content goes here that's the place where you can insert all the code which is needed to um, to display the site nav content and now we need to um, include a button so that the user is able to trigger and open up the site nav and I'll be embedding that button in 
in a div element and I'll assigning a class here which is called example dash site nav dash content okay so then we are defining a button here of type <coughs> button md button and the click event is bound to the following code so site nav and then I call the open method to open up the site nav okay like so let's close the button here and uh, the button should contain um, the label open site nav okay like so okay so next let's add the css implementation here in file site nav demo dot component dot css and first i need to define the class example dash container uh, would like to include uh, three css properties here so first of all we are defining the width should be of 100 uh, percent <clears throat> okay like so the height should be uh, 300 um, pixels and i would also like to define a border um, of one pixel solid um, and give it a color um, the following okay like so um, now I need to define the class example dash site nav dash content um, the display mode here should be flex um, height should be 100 percent um, align dash items should be set to center to center all the content here uh, it's basically our button and justify content should be center as well to center the button both horizontally and vertically <coughs> uh, align items okay like so uh, next let's define class example dash site nav um, just with a padding of 20 pixels and finally don't forget to define demo dash panel uh, with a margin of 10 pixels okay like so so let's uh, copy and paste uh, the uh, CSS class demo panel here to um, menu demo dot component dot CSS as well okay then go back to the template and I will use that class here uh, for the MD dash card element as well so demo panel okay and now finally to make the content of site nav demo um, available in our browser we do need to include it here in our um, um, main components template as well uh, so I'll add here app dot <coughs> app dash uh, site nav demo okay like so so back here in our browser as the web server is still running you can see the content has already been updated automatically now you can see we have the two card areas available here um, the second card area now is containing the output of our site nav demo component and you can see here in that area i have the button available open site nav and if i now click on the button you can see the site nav is um, 
um, popping up here at the left side uh, and you can see the content uh, just as saying site nav content goes here because we have only included the text so far of course you can include all the buttons um, all other elements whatever you like uh, so that's the way the site nav is working so the default behavior as you can see here is that the site nav content is uh, uh, floating over the primary content. You can see it here. So the primary content is not um, moving away. Um, it's just floating over. We can change that behavior by using um, the mode property for the site nav element and change it to push. Uh, and the difference here is that then the primary content is pushed out of the way. And I'd like to demonstrate this. So let's go back into site nav demo component uh, .html. and uh, for the md site nav element here we are adding that property mode and i'm assigning the string push here okay let's save it so let's save it uh, back in the browser, if I now click on open site nav again, you can see it's pushing over to the <coughs> to the right side the primary content here. So I think the difference uh, in that behavior becomes visible here. So okay, finally the last navigation element we'd like to um, uh, use in our application uh, is the toolbar element from the uh, material library and uh, first of all again I'm here in my terminal and I'd like to add another component for uh, the demonstration of the toolbar and again I'm saying ng g component toolbar demo in that case okay hit return and again we get the new component files generated and uh, first of all again i'm opening up app.module.ts uh, adding another material uh, library module here and uh, that is called md toolbar module okay and included here in the imports array as well md toolbar module okay uh, and now i can open up the new file toolbar de uh, um, toolbar dot component dot html remove the default content again and then start implementing um, the code which is needed to demonstrate the usage of the toolbar um, component. So I'm starting with md-card again, assigning the class of demo-panel, uh, include an md-card title element here, uh, with the headline angular material um, toolbar demo okay um, next let's use an md dash card dash uh, content element and within that content element uh, let's uh, use the md dash toolbar element and uh, I'd also like to use the color attribute here and assign the string primary to uh, display our toolbar and the primary color which is defi defined by the theme we are using okay so within the toolbar uh, first I'd like to use a spawn element here and include the text first row so okay uh, let's include uh, the toolbar demo component in app.component.html as well 
with app dash tool bar demo. Okay, and let's copy and paste as a demo panel class here to toolbar dot component dot CSS as well. Okay, here we have still an error present. Let's not include include the first row text. Uh, here is part of the element should be the content of the span element. Okay, so let's uh, check it back here in the browser. Now you can see the third uh, MD card area is visible and the toolbar here is displayed in the primary color of our theme with uh, a first row. Okay. So the toolbar can not only consist of just one column, we can add multiple columns to our toolbar. And just to demonstrate, I'll add another column here uh, inside the md-toolbar element. So let's use um, the md-toolbar row here to add a second row. Um, and this second row, should uh, first contain a text again. So I'm using the span element here and include uh, within the span element uh, the text second row. And then this second row should not only contain a text information, it should contain um, um, an icon as well. Um, but the icon should be displayed not on the left side, it should be displayed on the right side. So I'm um, using another span element here, which is uh, getting the class toolbar spacer to fill up the space here. Okay, and then use um, the md icon uh, element again with a class of toolbar dash icon and the icon which should be displayed here is a, a favorite icon okay and now of course i need to enter the css code for toolbar dash spacer and toolbar dash icon as well to uh, toolbar demo dot component dot css so let's add the corresponding um, code here so first of all, we have toolbar dash um, icon. Um, I'd like to define a padding here for the icon. Um, so it should be no pixels and 30 pixels. Okay, and finally, I need to include the CSS code for the class toolbar dash spacer and I'd like to have <coughs> a flex element here and assign the following values okay now let's check the result in the browser and here you can see now a second row is displayed the icon is displayed here on the right so that's exactly what we were expect expecting um, to to get as a result here Thanks very much for watching. This was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com. I hope you enjoyed my new video. And uh, the next part of the Angular material series is coming. In the next part, we will be focusing on tables. So if you are interested to learn more about the Angular material library, stay tuned. I hope to see you in the next video. Please also don't forget to visit my blog at CodingTheSmartWay.com. And I hope to you subscribe here to my channel on YouTube. Thanks very much again. See you in the next video. Bye.